If you want to practice all of the new PTE questions using artificial intelligence on an online portal that has a similar marking to your real PTE exam, head over to masterpte.com.au to create a free account. Here, you can practice all four sections separately and receive instant feedback for all of your speaking, writing, reading, and listening. You can also view and compare your answers with others who have already succeeded in achieving a high score. Download 9090 Bands template for speaking, writing, and listening. Take mock test, receive instant result, overall feedback, and in-depth analysis which helps you pinpoint exactly where you lose points. MasterPTE.com.au the best PTE practice software in the world. Uh, what we're going to discuss today is how the, the Port of London was discovered and what we discovered about it. Now, um, if you look at the historical records of Roman London, there's only about 14 actual references to London in antiquity, i.e. contemporary references. And of those, uh, only one is in the first century. Uh, there are none at all in the second or third century. There's only one in the late third century, and there's four in the fourth century. So if you're a historian trying to write a history of, of Roman London, it's very difficult. You don't really have much data. You're going to depend on the archaeological evidence, the material evidence uh, of the port and indeed the town to have any understanding of what happened then. And so what we're looking at here is how did we discover about the port of London? There is no historical documentations, no um, customs books, no tariffs, no idea of the taxes. We have to understand the port entirely from the archaeological evidence. So that's what we're going to do today. So if we move on to the next slide. I love live streaming. So <laughs> thank you very much.
Now, the economist calculated it's a back-of-the-envelope calculation that removing all immigration controls would double the size of the world economy, and even a small relaxation of immigration controls would lead to disproportionately big gains. Now, for an ethical point of view, it's hard to argue against a policy that will do so much to help people that are much poorer than ourselves. The famous RAND study reckons that a typical immigrant who arrives in U.S. ends up with 20000 a year. That's rough. It's not just the migrants themselves who gain. It's the countries they come from. Already, the migrants working for poor countries, working in rich countries, send home around $200 billion a year. Through formal channels, and about twice as that through informal channels. And that compares to the $100 million that Western governments give in aid. These remittances are not wasted on weapons or siphoned off into Swiss bank accounts. They go straight into the pockets of local people. They pay for food, clean water, and medicines. They help kids in school, and they help start up new business. Sample answer? Removing immigration control would double the world economy. This policy will do so much to help poor people. Immigrants end up with 20000 a year from gains in countries they come from. They send home around $200 billion a year through formal channels, which are twice as that through informal channels. These remittances can help local people for living straightly.
1943, what became known as the Green Revolution began when Mexico, unable to feed its growing population, shouted for help. Within a few years, the Ford and Rockefeller Foundations founded the International Rice Research Institute in Asia, and by 1962, a new strain of rice called IR-8 was feeding people all over the world. IR-8 was the first really big modified crop to make a real impact on world hunger. In 1962, the technology did not yet exist to directly manipulate the genes of plants, and so IR-8 was created by carefully crossing existing varieties, selecting the best from each generation, further modifying them, and finally finding the best. Here is the power of modified crops. IR-8, with no fertilizer, straight out of the box, produced five times the yield of traditional rice varieties. In optimal conditions with nitrogen, it produced 10 times the yield of traditional varieties. By 1980, IR-36 resisted pests and grew fast enough to allow two crops a year instead of just one, doubling the yield. And by 1990, using more advanced genetic manipulation techniques, IR-72 was outperforming even IR-36. The Green Revolution saw worldwide crop yields explode from 1960 through 2000.
Today we will talk about the expenses of education institutions among different European countries. UK spent 1.08% of its GDP on education institutions, which was insufficient compared to other European countries including Italy, Denmark, and Spain. The expenditure of Italy and France is close to that of the UK. Denmark and Finland spent much more than the rest of the European countries. Northern European countries' tertiary educational expenditure is high. The comics I show you with lots of people chatting around in a room is a form of description. We use different kinds of methods to describe a situation. Sometimes we have to use visual description, particularly when we do not witness the scenario. I was born during the Second World War and my hometown is destroyed. For example when I asked my mother about the war, I always ask her you have mentioned this or that when you talk to me when asked her about the shelter, I asked her what the shelter looks like and when did you go to the shelter. From her response, I could get more visual evidence as much as I can, in order to write my book.
protons are finally transferred to the LHC both in a clockwise and an anti-clockwise direction where they are accelerated for 20 minutes to 6.5 TeV. Beams circulate for many hours inside the LHC beam pipes under normal operating conditions. For each collision, the physicist's goal is to count, track and characterize all the different particles. The charge of the particle, for instance, is obvious since particles with positive electric charge bend one way and those with negative charge bend the opposite way. Also, the momentum of the particle can be determined. Large Hadron Collider LHC, is the world's largest particle accelerator that lies in a tunnel. The LHC is a ring roughly 28 km around that accelerates protons almost to the speed of light before colliding them head-on. Protons are particles found in the atomic nucleus, roughly 1,000 million millionth of a meter in size. The LHC starts with a bottle of hydrogen gas, which is sent through an electric field to strip away the electrons, leaving just the protons electric and magnetic fields are the key to a particle accelerator. Today we will talk about Australia's export business towards China, Japan, US. In the past, Australia was concerned about its geographical location, which may result in Australia being isolated from North America, UK, and later America. 
Nevertheless, nowadays with the rise of Asian countries, especially China, Australia has become a great export country with a perfect location. Currently, Japan is the largest exporting country to Australia, but China may become the largest one in the future. Australia should take the advantage of China's rise to develop its exports. The first thing I want to argue is that former civilization is running into pretty profound crisis in its relationship to the rest of nature, which we do and what we have depended on for survival and for flourishing. And this is the most widely and well-recognized relation to climate change, CO2 emissions, greenhouse gas emissions. But I want to argue the certain dangers in the way that has been presented as the central question that we have to address. Because it's interlocked with a number of other crises, that is most notably as the crisis in the access to fresh water, crisis in access to food, biodiversity loss on a huge scale, and associated problems of human and equality, not just in the common world, but actually in the kinds of environmental resources and pleasures that I can enjoy. So all, t all those together have to be looked at as interconnected set of really deep, profound crises.
Today's lecture is about a loggerhead turtle, one of the largest turtles in the world, and almost distinct in the USA. They have big heads and short necks. In September, 1986, scientists put a tracker on a turtle's shell, and use satellites to track and locate the migration route of the turtle. They reach different localities in different time. The migration takes three months, from the South Florida to the North. Today we will discuss the relationship between the fault lines in the Earth's crust and an earthquake. This dislocation of the rock occurs from the Earth's surface, seven kilometers to several hundred kilometers vertically down to the crust. The earthquake's focus is called the epicenter, which is vertically beneath the interior of the Earth's crust, and the energy releases and transfers through epicenter. The faults are the fracture on the Earth's crust. The position of the epicenters can be identified by the faults map looking down from the center of the Earth. It will result in seismic wave, which is decreased as it moved away from the epicenter.
If you want to practice all of the new PTE questions using artificial intelligence on an online portal that has a similar marking to your real PTE exam, head over to masterpte.com.au to create a free account. Here, you can practice all four sections separately and receive instant feedback for all of your speaking, writing, reading, and listening. You can also view and compare your answers with others who have already succeeded in achieving a high score. Download 9090 Band's template for speaking, writing, and listening. Take mock test, receive instant result, overall feedback, and in-depth analysis which helps you pinpoint exactly where you lose points. MasterPTE.com.au the best PTE practice software in the world.